My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. We're going to be talking about a classic comic book, man. Darker Image, number one, but first some business. My latest comic, Octobriana, 1976, the world's first blacklight comic, is in stores everywhere. It's also now available digitally. So if you read your comics on Comixology, you can find it there. You can find it at jimrug.com. There's a 350-page process zine that is available at both places. So all things Octobriana, now available. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor is where I'm serializing my current comic project, Red Room. Got about 150 pages drawn at this point, uh, serializing new pages every uh, Tuesday. And issue one is completely readable on there right now. But it's for the early adopter, man. It, it'll see a print edition, you know, sometime next year. Uh, but if you want to get in on the ground floor, you can check it out that way. Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. Jim, darker image number one. I never wanted a comic more than this at the time. I was so on board. It was a bunch of creators that I liked, and all the preview stuff that I saw made me like it even more. You know, Jim Lee's Death Blow, I was ready for this book, big time. Sam Keith had been a guy I was following for a long time, so excited to see him come to Image. And, you know, I was a Rob Liefeld fan. This book was everything. The darker part totally appealed to me. The idea that this was going to be a darker version, darker characters than what we were getting out of Youngblood and Wildcats. Hell yeah, man. I was on board for this and could not have been more excited. How about that Sam Keith cover, man, where he's he draws Death Blow and he draws... He draws Death Blow holding like a fucking... Like a, yeah, like a nunchuck. <laughs> half nunchuck, half gun. You know what I think it is, man? Like, you would see... You could see some like Apocalypse Now, like shit where they have uh they have a clip like taped to like upside down to like one of their other clips and i think this is like his version of like <laughs> just have it dangle on a nunchuck chain i don't know man i my advice for everybody is don't look too closely at death blow's gun on this cover <laughs> you might get confused those arms on blood wolf the tatters man the 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 hallmark tatters of uh the fabric man that so I wonder how many table. copies of this book sold. It must have been close to a million. I wouldn't be surprised. Because this is that first wave. Malibu is still publishing Image. So this is still like Image, you know, year one approximately. And I mean, that stuff was selling like wildfire to begin with. And Jim Lee, Rob Liefeld, Sam Keith in one book. This thing had to just sell a million. Darker Image number one of four. And... Uh... Are we doing the whole series? <laughs> we saw this in the Max Artist Edition. Here's what it looks like in print. Uh, kind of astonishing how much kind of gets lost like in the, the final printed page compared to the stuff that we saw in that big Artist Edition. Um, a lot more smoother grays were up in, in the, uh, the upper area there. It leads me to believe that the black line is probably just at 300 DPI, so a lot of, a lot of the black just kind of fades into one another. You know what's going on at this time, too, is for, for a guy like Sam Keith, you're coming from that 64 color palette of Marvel yeah. and newsprint of like Marvel Comics Presents to digital coloring, painting, you know, whatever's on the table, glossy paper, the best reproduction that comics have seen, especially comics like this, comic books in America. Um, there's a learning curve of like, what can we do? What does it look like in print? This was very very different than the experience he would have had up to this point and i can remember interviews where they would say that it'd be like jay lee uh come on over you know do some comics with us check it out and it's like you could compare these guys work to the marvel printing versus the image printing from like the same months sometimes and it was night and day if you cared about your art this was what you wanted yeah sam keith did not have a flatbed scanner sitting at the crib so he probably had to send this shit over to steve olive to get scanned uh, and put in there. And we know this border to be the Sam Keith signature border, but it's just blacked out. Something went wrong there. Yeah, that's that's an odd thing. And Steve Olive is the colorist of this. They got all the best colors of the various studios, man. So it's like, you know, Steve Olive doing the color. He was one of the gnarliest computer colorists. And that Joe Chiodo dude is nothing to sneeze at. I like his work a lot. That's what those image guys did was set up coloring studios, mm -hmm. you know, and hire people away from different places. Uh, you know, underwrite setting up several Macintosh computer systems, which like freelance colorists didn't have those. You yeah, know, it was uncommon that you would go spend five thousand dollars for for your for your computer like that. This is the era where the, that transition is happening. But this is the early days. And so those color labs were, were very, very, very new and something that image really kind of instituted. 
this is also pre Adobe Photoshop, man. So Steve Olliff at Ali Optics had his own kind of technology kind of set it up when he was doing Akira. So these like little shapes and shit, that's all him. And he's using weird vector tools and stuff. Yeah, Photoshop was not the default piece. Um, Dark Horse, I talked to somebody that was in Dark Horse's color department, and that probably would have been in a year or two after this. But, you know, it was almost like Corel Draw was used mm -hmm. early on. But there were these programs that just didn't go on to be anything that were vector based. And you can see that. You can yeah. see that in these little, you know, like you can the, see it in the way the cloud is outlined. The banding. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's very interesting what they could do it was in these a, early days. It was a signature of Steve Olive's work too, like the different kind of color banding stuff. And and that's that's gone in uh in comics coloring now. But you know what? His approach to it, I really fucking like it. I really like it. I, it like it's it, it really captures a, a moment. It's neat to me to see that stuff that exists, like you say, for a little bit. For a year or two you might see that kind of banding and then it's just gone. You know, you can look at these comics in the dollar bin and almost guesstimate their time from this kind of different little signatures like that. It's cool that the Mac shows up here pretty formed. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some visual stuff that he's going to work out over the over, you know, a couple issues of the Max, but concept-wise, like he came with this concept loaded, ready to go. Uh, are you ready to shift gears, Jimmy, and <laughs> and, and and go and go Lobo, go Keith Giffen? Yeah, man. Let's uh, let's let's look at some Blood Wolf. Rob Liefeld's Blood Wolf, uh, floating around there in outer space on a giant fucking mobile gun. I think that's an improvement. I think Lobo could have used a gun motorcycle. I think everybody could use a gun motorcycle like this. That's fair. That's but I fair. think that was a good piece that 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 Rob brings to it. Uh, first thing for me to note, Rob Liefeld inking himself here. One of the last times I think that he inks himself. Yeah. And I prefer it. I like that. You me know, too. there's a certain quality to that work that gets polished over once an inker comes on board. So kind of cool to see that part. It's a different approach too. like he inked his new mutant stuff and it was uh, more dip pen. And he had those like little like tick tick marks everywhere. Bisley is out there, and Lobo had his miniseries, and this is hot. and this is totally riffing. Oh yeah, 100%. on uh, you know these like kind of curvy shapes to everything, the kind of hairy texture. This even looks like some of Giffen's stuff. Whenever he starts, you know, he does that Trencher. little bit of style with Trencher. It kind of looks like that. Here we see an appearance by Lobo. <laughs> yeah, uh, cut to I don't know, fifteen years later, Rob Liefeld draws some Lobo comics. So shades of things to come. Uh. Steve Olaf, I gotta gotta call you out on one thing, and it's that green gun motorcycle, or it's the gray gun motorcycle against the gray hallways. It's a bad that, that that's a tough choice. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Gray on gray, uh, gray on gray. Like, <laughs> come on, man, you're, you're you're free of the Marvel that limited color palette. Like, gray on gray. Yeah, sad. How about that decapitation, though, Jimmy? <laughs> he blew his head off. That's a gun decapitation. Like, he shoots his head off. Yeah, I guess he just hit that little knot of that, uh, that you know, uh, C6, C7. <laughs> Whatever, yeah, I, I don't know exactly how it worked, but not only did it blow his head off, also an eye coming through. Love it. Oh, dude, and this is just like Metal Gear Solid. Like, whenever you're snooping around... And uh, you make a little too much noise. The bad guys, they get that little question mark or that exclamation point over their head. Yeah, he's using like weird, the, the arrow. I don't know. Oh, you know what? That's a bomb that he that he leaves behind. <laughs> Look at all those like little buckles on his ankle. <laughs> yeah. It's so ridiculous. It'd be a nightmare to put that, that boot on and off. Rob Liefeld cutting promos, Jimmy. Whoa. Who's this guy? He's with Youngblood because he has a Y. Oh, Colonel Bar Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's uh that's a funny choice again in line with lobo you know doing a lot of like pop culture kind of references i guess this is that interpretation of of that kind of character blood wolf's a cool design man i like that hair i like these like little hairy pieces on the arm there good colors that's the wolf part the hairy pieces <laughs> yeah exactly he's got the mutton chops i i really have to emphasize how much i like the inking in this yeah, yeah, sure. Like, uh, Rob is a user of like the Copic fine liners. You know, that's what he, that's what he, his tool of choice. He doesn't dip 
He doesn't There's depend. Man. noodling that's going on, but then also like these background characters are just, uh, you know, very light lines. There's not a lot of black shadowing compared to, you know, your, your main character that has the shadowing on it. I think that looks good. Yeah. It feels European. I did think that guy's head that was blown off reminded me of Jeff Darrow. Could be the eyeball flying out of his head, but uh, something about it. Makes sense. This is the part that really offends me with the gray on gray. Sure. Like, that's that's surprising coming from Steve Olaf. Yeah. It makes me wonder if Rob insisted on this kind of color treatment on this sequence, because that's hard, man. He almost makes uh, the gun you know disappear. What? You know what? I love it. I love it, because we're going to get Steve off the hook. <laughs> We're going to get Steve off the hook, man, because he's not the only colorist on this story. <laughs> you think this is Byron's? I'm going to say that that's Brian Talman. <laughs> Steve, you're off the hook, brother. All right. Don't even trip, man. <laughs> this is hilarious. I know, right? This is straight out of... Those guys are like, oh, shit. The Three Stooges. Also, look at... The, there's the holes blown in that dude's chest. <laughs> that's right off the cover of Hard, Hard Boiled, I think. <laughs> Picks up his vehicle... Does away with a bunch of dudes. Fucking Rob drawing a, a skeleton. You know, that's ambitious. Yeah, that's a big gun. Also, the gun barrels change from the two giant chambers to the eight pack. That's Kirby. Kir Kir Kirby would draw the little circles on Thor's chest, uh, you know, sometimes four, sometimes six. Can't wait for issue two. Yeah, it's this is a, a pretty weird, strange comic. I, I would have dug more of this. Um, uh, Blood Wolf or Darker Image? Blood Wolf and Darker Image. Yeah, it's the this is the, the quintessential Apex '90s right yeah. here, man. This this whole setup, man. Uh, we're we're gearing up for a look. It's called Young Blood Bloodshot, but we know it to be Deathmate when it eventually does come out. Yeah, this blood's for you. And what's we got to make note of the freaking ponytail on Shaft? That's no good. This design's fun. It's like this blood's for. Yeah. <laughs> that Y, it's it's a black Y literally on a black inked part of the guy's leg. It's a it's 20-year-old kids fucking By the way, got a it's hold coming of a computer. Out July 193. Like like it's, All right. it's, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't don't put any of that information in white right yeah. here. How how well could that have read right here? <laughs> Oh, well. ah, these guys it's a young right. company. All right, Jimmy, I'm going to try to incite. I'm going to, K Favors, let's make a meme using Jim Lee's Death Death Blow comic, not to be confused with Death Mate. Not, and, not to be confused with the previous page's Death Mate ad. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, the onus on this one, man, is, uh, is uh, probably Brandon Choi, the luckiest uh, man in comics. <laughs> The onus will probably be on him. And it's it's the first two captions, right? Like, this is perfect meme, meme worthy stuff. I hate the jungle. Nothing but goddamn foliage. Jim, this time last year, I was in Japan. And you know what? A lot of Japanese out there. That's the meme with the two captions, man. You state one thing, and then you state the obvious in caption number two. I hate the jungle. Nothing but goddamn foliage. What did you think was going to be out there, uh, Death Blow? <laughs> and this is them doing their best, uh, you know, Erzatz, Frank Miller. Right. And it's so funny that I feel like this was just a, a hard experience for Jim Lee. <laughs> and it makes me so sad because this is another example of Jim Lee's inking himself here. Uh -huh. I say it a million times. I love to see these guys ink themselves. It's a different quality that you're getting. Mm -hmm. But I think the blowback for the Sin City kind of knockoff qualities stung. Sure. And we don't see this again. Yeah, he doesn't play around. He he, he sticks tried and true for uh, for the bulk of, of his career. And, uh, you know, uh, this comic is embarrassing. Um, it is. It's, it's bad. It, 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 you, like, you don't learn anything. The storytelling isn't great. Jim Lee's an Ivy Leaguer, and whatever he likes in Frank Miller, he doesn't have, he's not at this point able to deconstruct and figure out how to put that into his thing. That's an interesting note, Ed. Um, would you describe that as like, Miller will go minimal at times, it's very like graphic shape, uh, I don't know, you know, focus on sort of this graphic composition. And Jim Lee, it's almost like you've got to have all those details. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense. I mean, I think that's what people partially respond to in Jim Lee's work. 
I'm but talking, it is weird. I'm, and I'm talking about storytelling approach as well, because like, like just the kind of stuff that we're seeing in the images for, I, I think Jim Lee's a very smart guy, but I think he has a lot of blind spots. This Frank Miller approach, like it gets, it gets academic, you know, it gets comics 101 at a certain point here when we launch back into, into Washington and, and, you know, we're debriefing. There's our Lynch character. I guess this might be his first appearance. And he be, he gets played for laughs in Gen 13. Here's here's one confusing bit. Is the guy they're talking about Deathblow? Or is this Deathblow? Yeah, it's, it is very confusing. You're because, right. because then it, it, it's like this guy, it's like that knowing gaze. And then it fades into the Deathblow phase. Like, like, is this this guy? It's very unclear. And there is nothing like artful about the writing that is like leaves it up for interpretation it's literally just bad writing yeah the computer color like jim lee is the is the god of his studio he said he you know what he says goes and like this weird modeling stuff it doesn't make sense i agree with you however I'm happy that he tries this. I wish he tried this more. If you see like, um, you know, Jim Lee sketches and things like that, he's really inventive and, and I think a much better artist than what you see on most of his comics pages. Mm -hmm. And so it makes me sad because like you're, tr almost any time you try something like this, it's a step back and then a couple steps forward. Right. I don't know that he gave himself the time to do the couple steps forward. Yeah. Um, because of backlash or whatever. Being you know? a fan favorite and getting your fucking balls licked yeah, every, two, every two seconds that can be, that can be is, uh, is great. And when you, you know, step out of that comfort zone, man, and then you get your first, uh, your first major criticisms, might get a little salty. There shouldn't be this many words in a death blow comic. You know, like, <laughs> like think of what, th this is, these are, these are toy advertisement comics. Yeah. You can't have that many words in a toy advertisement. This is, you know, Brandon Choi, it was noted in one of our Wizard episodes that they, like, Xeroxed all the pages of uh, Sin City and they were passing them around the studio. So so it's him trying to, like, reverse engineer. And this is them, like, trying to, like, add pathos and and stuff to, to what is a silly comic that has no stakes, goes nowhere. Like, of all three comics in here... This is the one that works the least as just like a storytelling. Uh, get us from point A to B. Yeah, I think you're right. Just there's judging nothing this one here. Issue, this, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> and it has more words than the other two put together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you were to remove it and just have kind of literally what's happening, there, there is nothing. It's like guys on a boat uh, back in Washington. He's like, go kill this guy. It does flashback or something <laughs> that I don't know what has to do with anything. And then back to Washington where he's like, well, I guess that guy's on his way to kill that other guy. To be continued, and I'm not the least bit excited about, like, uh, you know, where, where it's going. As, as a piece of comic storytelling, it's boring. Is this story reprinted in Deathblow 1? I don't know about that. I have it, but... Yeah, I can't remember if that's the case or not. Because uh, Jim Lee does, like, two Deathblow issues, mm -hmm. or half issues, since it's cybernary uh, flipped. Yeah. And... I wonder if it's like this story is Deathblow 1 and then Chapter 2, or maybe even like Chapter 1 and 2 is in Deathblow 1 and 3 and 4 is in Deathblow 2, something Jimmy, like that. Jimmy, you're going to fuck around and make us have to do videos about that, man. Hey, it's intentional <laughs> just so we can talk about Cybernary. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, this this is uh, not, not his best showing, but like I said, I wish that he would have kept going in these kind of experimental direction there's cool stuff here like like uh this these faces they feel like uh carlos esquerza from 2000 ad you know the creator of judge dread and and uh, strontium dog like that's that's a really interesting kind of approach some early digital color experimentation as well with this like monochromatic palettes yeah yeah it's it's like i said i'm, I'm kind of bummed that he didn't go in this direction a little bit more but hey that's life and uh what are you gonna do not too much to say about Deathblow, though. It was probably my biggest disappointment. I was looking forward to it so much. All of the cool art I had seen leading up to it was like, this is going to be my favorite Jim Lee thing ever. And then it wasn't. Right. Flip the back cover, though. Jay Lee coming to Wildcats. 
Jay Lee, one of those like, you know, next generation of image guys that was kind of super hot, getting hot, heating up. And then the image guys leave Marvel. He's still around pretty badass. And then it's like life out and Jim Lee are like, dude, come on over. Right. <laughs> do, do, do some of our characters do hell shock, whatever. Check out the good paper and, and reproduction we can give you. I feel like he, he really took advantage of that and, uh, and shines. And so this becomes a thing that I'm looking forward to. Like that image stuff at the time, so much of it was just the ads. Uh-huh. Give me the ad. I'm in, you know, the other one was Youngblood Strike File that was floating around about the same time. Same deal. I would see those ads and just be like, I got to get this. And speaking of Chapel, this is like Frank Miller inspired kind of style. Chapel is the Extreme Studios version. And I forget the guy who drew it. It's Calvin, Calvin something or something. Calvin, I think is his name. And there might be one or two volumes of it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's real similar to this Death Blow approach where it's like that Frank Miller Sin City style Trying to filter that through a Jim Lee or a Rob Liefeld language is weird. That's a weird mashup. You know what? But you get to see everybody try it. We're going to have to do a Shadowhawk. A, a Rob Liefeld Shadowhawk uh, That's video. true. That, that's probably the closest of like the Rob Liefeld trying to do the Frank Miller Sin City style is Shadowhawk Zero whenever they do the Image X books. Jimmy, I just got an idea. We, we got to get out of here. Hey, favors, like, follow, subscribe <laughs> to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Octobrian is in stores now. Get it while it's hot. If you don't find it in the store, get it digitally or online. Uh, Comixology, Jim's website, jimrug.com. Mm -hmm. uh, Patreon.com slash edpiscor is where Red Room is being serialized. My current comics project. Issue one is up there right now. New strips go live every Tuesday, and three bucks will get you the complete archive. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Give them those merchant orders, Jimmy. Read more comics. <laughs>